This is Spencer Gibb. Thanks, Leah. Okay. Yeah, you know, they're like, no. Bad. Wow. Yeah, that's a... That's a loaded, long-ass <laughs> answer. What have I been up to during the pandemic? Um, besides, I guess, screaming at, uh, at the television. No, I'll tell you what, not what I expected. That's for sure. I didn't, I didn't write. I didn't, um, uh, I didn't do too much creative stuff. I wasn't actually feeling that inspired. You know, I'd been doing a lot of studio work right up until the pandemic officially hit. And I guess I was just sort of drained and I didn't feel like forced to, to do it at the time. It's been, um, you know, obviously been a very surreal year for everyone and, and for me, my life didn't change too dramatically because I work from home and work from a studio. Uh, studio work was out, but otherwise it's it's been um, a lot less interesting than you might think. Um, that's for sure. I am making new music. Uh, I'm excited excited by it um, i'm gonna be starting a new ep fairly soon and and this time i promise it will just be an ep um because <laughs> uh, the last time i said that a few years ago it ended up being a full length and lots of years of recording so no this will be a lot faster and it'll be in your hands quicker uh, just signed a new management deal which is really exciting so there's fun stuff coming that you're going to be hearing about. I've got songs that I've been slowly working on for actually for a while that have just sort of been shelved periodically. And yeah, so new music is, is coming. Um, and you'll be updated as I progress. I don't even know how to answer that. Like, um, everything. <laughs> I probably broke Netflix at one point in the first two or three months of, of lockdown. Um, yeah. I don't think there's anything left to watch on Netflix. I think I might have to cancel my subscription. Uh, Amazon came out with The Boys season two, around about the start of lockdown. That was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen that show, check it out. It's called, cool. it's pretty graphic, um, and but funny. Uh, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, can go wrong with Law and Order as for you. Um, glad they came back. <laughs> new shows. That, I like that new uh, show, Debris. I hope it lasts. It's from the people that made Fringe, which was one of my favorite shows a few years back. A bunch of different documentaries. Wonder Woman 1984 came out at Christmas. That was fun. Oh, Coming to America sequel. Um, Totally forgot about the Coming to America sequel. I, I loved that. And any of you that are poo-pooing it, you, you, you're missing the point. But really, I just thought it was great and a great homage to the original and did a fantastic job and I laughed my ass off. Has Hugh Jackman called me yet? No, he fucking hasn't. Come on, Hugh. Really? Like, you know, people have been throwing you enough messages, I feel. Come on, I'll buy some of your coffee. It's for charity, right? Come on in. What have I been listening to? That's, uh... That definitely, definitely varies. Um, you know, obviously going back to some old classics, especially sort of earlier on in lockdown, uh, there was sort of a lot more extra time. Um, in terms of stuff, the older stuff, um, I listened to a lot of Nina Simone last year, um, but more so I think than I ever have before. 
because I even discovered some stuff that uh, um, that I wasn't like super fam familiar with. In fact, I wasn't even that familiar with her version of To Love Somebody, which I think is actually really great. Uh, my sort of pandemic uh, soundtrack in terms of newer stuff, a bunch of, of actually cool stuff that like friends of mine have been doing. Like, I, uh, you know, I love the new stuff by Primo the Alien, who's here in Austin, and Sarah Darcy. Um, if, if you haven't checked that stuff out, Go for it, it's, it's, it's great, it's really, really cool. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming out of Austin right now. What I'll, what I'll actually do is I'll put together a Spotify playlist of, uh, you know, 10 to 20 tunes that I've been listening to over the last year, and I will post that on Instagram and Facebook. So you... What did I think of the HBO Bee Gees documentary? Uh, I thought it was fantastic. I really, not bullshitting. I was uh, really blown away uh, for a number of reasons. Um, yeah, Frank Marshall, Nigel Sinclair, everyone did just such an incredible job. I was blown away by, first of all, the amount of music that they were able to, um, you know, cram into a, a two hour spot. Uh, I was, Skeptical, I gotta be honest, that you would be able to tell that story in in two hours uh, when you know you're dealing with with brothers that had such an extensive you know career, like probably more extensive than like anyone that you, you would think it would, would have to be a mini series, and they pulled it off. They um, and. I guess because you guys, you have guys like Frank Marshall who are, you know, really seasoned storytellers, directors, producers, that there was a narrative to it. Like it actually, they created this incredible story arc and it got to one point halfway through where I actually forgot I was watching my own family. And I think that says a lot about how cool it was. I mean, obviously there are things that had to be left out and et cetera, et cetera, but didn't matter. I think that the emotion was there. I think that the story was there. The music. There's a lot of footage that people haven't seen before. Yeah, I just did. I, I just thought they did an amazing job. Um, blew me away, honestly. And yeah, that's a wrap. God, I just uh, you know, yeah, run out of time. Gotta go. Uh, Hugh, give me a shout. You know what I'm saying? I'm still rolling. Well, you're not, you can't use any of that. Well, sometimes, like sometimes you can. Fine.